listen to me clearly on this next point. They are going to thump Florida into the ground and then they're gonna throw them over the damn bridge. They're gonna kill Florida. I told y'all, the dogs, 43 to 20, another trip to Jacksonville, another Georgia win over Florida, another convincing win. This one was over early. Uh, Georgia went field goal, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Uh, offense, defense, special teams, y'all, they played excellent football, elite football team. That's what we saw beat Florida. Uh, they look like the number one team in the country. Carson Beck over 300 yards again with multiple touchdowns. At some point, you got to start talking about him and the Heisman oh, conversation. Cool. Why Why not? Oh, oh. We can talk about the game a little bit not more, but let's talk about that later. Ryan, what did you think? Yeah, complete game. Another another complete game where they played well in all three phases, uh, especially with the puck lock that turned into a safety. So I, I agree with you. They looked like the best team in the country again, um, just like they did a few weeks ago against Kentucky. I thought that they responded well to Florida, you know, going down there and getting a quick touchdown. They get a score of their own, and then they just score, 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 score. Florida just couldn't move the ball down the field. They couldn't move the ball down the field. And there were spurts where Georgia struggled to do the same thing and had to punt a couple times near midfield. But for the most part, domination, domination. 10 west. 10 west and half a mile. Uh, so not surprised. Um, this is, I think this was, hey, don't mess with us. Do not mess with us. 10 west? 10 west. Okay. Don't mess with us. We're gonna we're gonna hurt you. They're as healthy as they've been. You had Ingram Dawkins out there tonight. You know, um, I've got a lot to say. I did a lot in leggy thoughts too. The biggest thing that this will make your night even better. Make sure you're you are a part of our newsletter. We cannot. There's so much stuff you're missing out on. The link is down below. Ryan's gonna make sure to get that in the description. Do yourself a favor, be a member of that list because there's new stuff coming up. Like there is new stuff coming up that I've got coming up shortly that you're going to want to hear about. I thought, you know, seven, nothing Florida. That was like not a good look, but it's like, it doesn't matter with Kirby's defenses. It's like they play their base defense out there Something. and they get a feel of the offense. And then they say, okay, let's That's make it. some adjustments and boom, they scored the next 36 points. This felt like a blowout. This is probably the biggest blowout since 2017. Last two years, it, the game felt tighter. like it was yeah. over at the half still. They but were tighter. I was writing my story up at halftime. I mean, you knew that they were clearly the better, more physical, deeper, well-coached team. In every aspect, Georgia was better than Florida today. I thought it was a statement win because they came out and said, you know what, anyone across the country who is putting a six, five, four, whatever, this is what we can do, especially yeah. when we're healthy. And again, they're missing the best player in college football. And eight, nine guys still caught a pass. And Carson Beck still looked great. Um, you know, this was a challenge for Mike Bobo and Carson Beck to keep the offense moving without your best player. And they did that today. But as good as the offense looked, I thought the defense played phenomenal. They were fast, aggressive, eight tackles you wanna, behind the – You want to go – you're turning right up there. Yep, the, got it. Eight tackles behind the line of scrimmage, four sacks. They got after Graham Mertz, who looked okay early on. But then he had some real trouble. And like we said before this video, it seems like a lot of teams are going to have real trouble scoring on this defense for four quarters. Welcome back, Lad McConkey, to the party in a big way. I just want to say it was good to see the Florida fans for about half the game. It was awesome <laughs> for them to be there during yeah. this. I remember how smug so many of them were for such a long time. Uh, smug is – this is a family – I've learned so much from yeah. Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy. This is a family uh, program. Yeah. I would use other words privately, but uh, not with Jeff watching. No, no. We're trying to get him to be the next Batman. Um, <laughs> I, you know, they were so smug, and y'all don't remember this as well as I do, but I can assure you, I do. And now they seem like they, Ryan, were just happy to be there. They were. They when they look, they started flooding out of there at halftime, yeah. just laughing, having a good time. Everyone's all smiles, and I I spent a lot of time in the Florida kind of area, the Florida side, and it reminded me a lot of the Orange Bowl 
where Michigan, the Michigan fans were just happy to be there. That's kind of what it looked like to me. That speaks volumes as to where these two programs are at. And look, they know that they're going to get an ass whooping. Three in a row, six out of seven. And uh, I think it's 10 out of 15. Probably, I'm not sure, though. The series is now 56 to 44 to two. George is running away from this series. And it's going to take a lot for Billy Napier to build a team top to bottom that can compete with the Georgia Bulldogs anytime soon. Let's get on Florida in a second. I want to stick on Georgia, though. Edwards, the run game. Carson, I'm not going to say some of the stuff Carson was doing. This is an emotional game for Carson Beck, um, clearly. And uh, he, he wanted to play well. Lad McConkey made it so easy for him at times. The run game was there the whole night. This defense is legit. You know, I think there was reason to be concerned to some degree. But I have to say, these last three games particularly, Georgia has blown Kentucky out. They have blown the Gators out. And honestly, they blew out Vanderbilt. But no one wants to do that. They just want to talk about how they had to survive at Auburn. And it's just like, hey, you're you're focusing on the negative. I understand it. You're a Georgia fan. This is what you're like. Y'all are elite at that. It's like Larry Munson. You know, when I listen, when our friends downtown in Athens, when you're going to go visit Red Zone this week, don't fill it with a bunch of negativity. Go there and have fun. Spend your money. Get your Christmas gifts going on because you should be preparing for another playoff. Now, this is not going to get easier, Ryan. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. It's going to a little bit it's harder. It's going to get a little yeah. bit harder. Uh, someone in the press box was saying that Georgia is like a 20-point favorite over Missouri, which so, is a little much for me. So our, our our message board is one of the best reasons why you're on dog posts, yeah. honestly. And there's a there's a guy on there who does a lot of this all the time, and I really read his posts. So I'm not just saying that. Um, 20 seems like a lot to me. Yeah. 17? 17 makes a little bit more sense. 20 seems kind of extreme, but, but, but we'll look, we're, they're playing as well as anybody is in the SEC right now. So let me just spit that out. this out. 17, and, and you can comment down below. We appreciate the comments, and we love that. But 17, like, that's a tough ask for the team that's down 17 points on the line. I mean, that, that for me, yeah. you're asking a lot, man. Yeah, and Missouri's got a quarterback playing well. Yeah. He's got weapons. Theo Wees and Luther Burden Burn. are – Ballers. Trouble. Uh, ballers. Trouble. Georgia wanted Luther Burton bad. Probably came in second to Missouri, but I, I do think that Georgia came out today laser-focused. We talk about the bye week coming at the perfect time every year, and it feels like it definitely did this time. But credit to the offensive line. I think they gave Carson a ton of time all day long. They opened up the running lanes. And, it, again, without Brock Bowers, they still put up 43 points and made it look easy. I thought Carson distributed the ball really well. We saw some big plays from Oscar. Everyone pitched in. And Dom Lovett had a, another really nice day. Dylan Bell's a weapon. Yeah. He's a problem, he's trouble, man. He's, he's a real, real trouble. He's a real problem. Yeah. Brian, uh, when you when – when you're watching it, well, I guess the two of you, because I'm on the field, I can hardly, you know, I see what I see and y'all see what you see. Yeah. Are guys are guys as wide open as it seems at times? Yeah, no, there, there are okay. people, they they find the zone. So they, that's a real problem. Yeah, it, it is a problem. But, you know, you want to man these guys up, then you're playing man. Like, yeah. that's not easy to do. And if you're sitting, in, if you're going to sit there and zone. You can't play man against these guys. Well, you might have to. I mean, like. Well, you say man when, when Brock Bowers is in the lineup? You can't be scared of Georgia. But you have to mix you up You have the to coverages. go play the game. Like, yeah. you can't be scared. If you're Ohio State or Alabama or Michigan or Mizzou, yeah, you do have to play man sometimes. Do I still don't know where I'm going here. Oh, uh, so, yeah. Was exit 356 in a mile. Okay. But see how Ryan delivered? Eco Poly can do that for you. Make sure you're checking the link out down below. I'm going to turn it up the right side. Way. You like that? Uh, that was the, the guys at Eco probably love it as much with the transitions and anything. But make sure you're checking all their collections out. The link for that is down below. They are huge supporters of Dog Post, them and Red Zone. We cannot do this stuff without them. Please check them out. Red Zone, you need to go downtown in Athens. It's on Clayton Street. It's easy to find. It's not so far from anything. Eco Poly. Check out the link down below. You get 15% off and free shipping for every single thing. You can get any color in the sky. I mean, it's, it's very good quality stuff. We're going to show some new stuff in the near future. You're going to have to mix it up and get straight. 
This is your exit. Okay. Right here. You're going to have to. You can't be scared to play Georgia. Missouri has weapons. Now, I don't want to get to the Missouri thing yet. We got all week to talk about Missouri. Yeah. But I think the thing for me is left or right. Left. I think the thing for me is if you're Missouri, you got to go on the road. You're playing a team in Georgia that, to be honest with you, I mean, I don't know about hot, but they're playing well. Missouri's playing well too, frankly. But it's just, it's a tough ask for Missouri. However, tonight, the Florida fans, like, I, it, I was, that, it's getting. They weren't angry. No, it's a problem. They just took the loss and they went on about. Well. They took it too well. No, too that's, well. That, I remember the They 90s. went about their night. I remember the 90s well. And, and I'll just tell you, Georgia people were frustrated, pissed, whatever adjective you want to use. And then, you know, with Mark, you know, God, God bless Mark Rick. And if, if God ain't blessing Mark Rick, then there's something wrong. But, you know, he had a lot of really rough runs in Jacksonville. Exit 19 and a mile. And then in 2011, this thing changed. Actually, 2007, man. Yeah. It was a 2007 game. Oh, man, I just can't get over it. I'm um, not going fast enough. Well, they didn't win it again until 2011, no, but, right? But Mark lost. He had to win in 07. And, and from one to six, he was one in, I think, one in five. And then in seven, that was such a monumental win. And honestly, that moment changed everything in this series. And I know people, from that point forward, it was a different thing. Florida wasn't winning like seven in a row. It was Georgia and Florida fighting each other with like three year win streaks. Yeah. That seven win mattered a lot. And then the Gators won in eight, nine, and, 11, and 10. Then this is us, right? Yes. Eight, nine, and 10. And then Georgia in 11 was a ballsy win. And 12 yeah. was a huge, that was Gigantic. one of Mark's biggest big, wins. Yeah, big win. And then in 13, you know, they, they look like they're about to blow them out. And, they, and then it just was a disaster after that. And they held on the win. Uh, but Aaron Murray being on the sideline. I have so memory, many memories of this game in my lifetime. And then 14 was a train wreck. Yeah. But that moment with Mark, that changed the series. It didn't seem like it necessarily yeah. the next year because Florida went on the one national championship. But it actually did. I mean, Georgia had won before seven. Uh, 20, 2007, they'd won twice since 1989. And 04 was massive. 04 was, was massive. massive. And, you know, I was, massive. I was telling y'all before we started this, this game yeah. means so much because we heard Mike Bobo oh, going yeah. crazy in uh, yeah, the Mike. offensive coordinator, the offensive staff's kind of room where they're calling the plays. When they're taking the knee and victory formation, you could hear them celebrating. It just shows you how much this game means to everyone, the players, yes. but the staff, guys who are on the staff now who played in this game in the 90s. This means so much. And for them to dominate the way they did tonight and the past two years and to see where this rivalry is going, it's, it's heading in Georgia's direction for sure. I don't know how you quantify this. But if there's a person with Georgia in their blood that that loves winning this game more than Mike Bobo, it's Kirby. I, I don't even think that's true. It, 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 I, Mike's number one. I think for me it's Mike because I've seen it yeah. in person. The way his reaction was with Malcolm Mitchell that night in 2012. This game. He's a South Georgia guy too. Yeah, this it's, game makes seasons. You don't, you don't lose this game and do anything no, else. You really lose this hard. game, you're, really you're done. Hard. That's what history says. Yeah, I mean, Georgia bucked that history twice somehow in 02 and 05. Yeah. But but that's a, a rarity. Yeah. Um, Kirby said tonight in, in the post game, you know, we knew this this the the East goes through Jacksonville. Yeah. And it does. I mean, Missouri won it in 13, and maybe Missouri will win it this year. They won't. But maybe they'll win it this year. But the, the, the thing goes through Jacksonville. It's just all there is to it. People don't know how special this I, – I feel like, you know, Tim Tebow was talking about – I just saw what people wrote about it. I didn't see what Tim said. But he said, you don't think this game is special? Well, honestly, Tim, everybody does know it's special. But he reiterated the point. There's a Hall of Fame for this game. You know, they don't do that for Georgia-Auburn. So the whole thing with, like, Jacksonville – and I can start complaining. I'm not going to yet. We're going to – let me park first. But I'm not going to complain yet. But there's so much of – like, this game matters 
so much for Georgia and the Gators both. It is a consequential game every single year. It matters a lot, not just for the league, not just for this, that, or the other. It just matters that night. I mean, like that night, it's all that matters. People don't look at other scores. You know, I'm finding out after the game that Clemson lost. We're four and four. We're sitting at four and four. Did they get beat soundly too? I thought. Oh, I don't it know. Did play today? NC, NC State. State. I think it got uh, ugly. No, 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 they lost by a touchdown. That's oh, okay. Not great. Like you know, I gotta go home to that now. <laughs> it's you know awesome. what I mean? Like you look at South Carolina getting just destroyed. There's so many, but in this this day, I don't know who won the Cal USC to game. Park. I don't know <laughs> who won SC Cal. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know either. And like, I, I should Do we be. Want scores? Is that what? No. Well, my point <laughs> in all of this is Georgia, Florida above it's, it's, everything. It's its own weird. It's not weird. over everything. It's its own this week. thing completely. This week, yeah. yeah. It just like like we watch Penn State and like Oklahoma lost, which is like the least surprising thing I've ever seen. Just be, just because, you know, like, they just... That's what they do. They should have never beaten Texas. I'm just going to tell you that right they now. They gutted that out. They did. For they, sure. They totally need to be given credit for that. Yep. But they want to bring that... Look, they want to bring that shit to the playoffs. They're going to get run right out of that thing. Yeah. Period. Oh, if Oklahoma was playing Georgia down here in Jacksonville, oh, it's probably the same score yeah, as it was just back. back they, would, they really would have gotten really popped hard. But... You know, y'all have been coming to this since 17. You've been coming since 21. And y'all, this, you know, younger people have seen the total domination of Georgia. Georgia, basically peak Georgia at average Florida or even worse. It is hard for those of us who have been around for a long time in our formative years where the 80s and the 90s to, there, we, I think there's a, a amount of respect for Florida that's given that honestly they've not earned in the last 15 well no. 10 years at all um no. i don't think they're going to have a losing season this year but i don't think they're going to get past six wins because they're still going to deal with lsu and um lsu missouri and florida state they're probably yeah, going to just have a hard time it's just a them. tough schedule but you know i just i think that they are georgia's biggest rival sort of makes it mean more but the better team uses loses it loses this game very rarely and the team who runs the ball better almost always wins they this game. They had 20 yards rushing at the half. Yeah. Uh, I think Georgia rushed for about a buck 70. Yes. But Florida got been. over 100 because it was garbage time. In it was the at the quarter, end. In yeah. Third and fourth quarter they ran. But Georgia said, you're, you're not running on us. Well, and they Florida got the did edge for a, a second. little bit. Yeah. For a second there, I was for like, man, they better, put, they better yeah. sh shut that down. And they did. And they did. And they got pressure. Damon Wilson. Constantly. Uh, true yeah, freshman a play. with a half a sack with Michael Williams. Uh, they were in they were in the backfield a good bit. Jamon Dumas Johnson had another sack. Um, Jalen Walker, number eleven, was flying all over the place. Um, They're not. They, so is Miles. they was, don't have the players Georgia has. Yeah. It doesn't matter the way that it used to. Yeah. Slash, it doesn't matter the way that it does to Georgia now. They have an existential problem at Florida. It's not because I cover Georgia and own something called Dog Post. It's because it's reality. Florida yeah. is not serious in the way that other schools are about athletics, and you can tell now, and specifically about football. I mean, why is your men's basketball coach leaving to go to Georgia? Yeah. Their recruiting class is getting there, but he's going to have to start winning Games. Games, yeah. yeah. Or like he's going to get that LSU time. game is a big, big game yeah. for them. They're, do you think they can beat LSU, uh, LSU and Florida State? They're going to beat both of them. Which are they more likely to win? Uh, Florida, Florida State, State. is – I don't – Florida, State, Florida State, looks State looks good. I think to they me. could beat – LSU's defense is still a giant question mark. Do they play anyone? Think, I just think oh. LSU can go in and put up but, 50 or 60 on Florida. L yeah. LSU and Florida State are – not dissimilar and and you saw that for three quarters of that game until i don't know what that was in the fourth quarter i mean florida state's best win is duke i think at this stage at home the four yeah. the four and four clemson is not one and then L oh, i'm sorry lsu i don't know why i said that yeah so yeah. that so yeah. duke and lsu but like like they should have lost to clemson they should have lost that game if and clemson they, had a kicker they Clemson, lose that game. Clemson wins Correct. The game. And it's all total chaos in the ACC. And it may be that Florida State doesn't get on the field. Florida State and Michigan, to me, are the two teams that you'd better pay attention to if you're a Georgia fan. Now, I have to say tonight, y'all, Ryan, you've not talked in a while, that Georgia does now look pretty 
firmly to me like the best team in the country, but the national people not, might not see it that way. I don't know. I mean, I think Michigan's up there for sure too. Yeah, Michigan's up. They just haven't played anybody that Georgia's played. I mean, that's true. Georgia's but not is Florida. Played. They're not, and Florida's not a bad team. That's not a bad football team like we thought they might have they're been. They're not great, though. The they're not great, but they're better they're than not great. everybody Michigan's played. That's true. But, dude, all you – I mean, Matt, you don't want to, like, overdo it with any one thing. It's, Say it like, it's not significant. They're not significantly ahead the way that they have been. But they're number one. Georgia. Yeah, until, so, until they so, lose again. So, what I was – trying to say there was like you can see it like they should beat Missouri and there, there's a reason why they're, they're playing at home they're f more physical than Missouri although Missouri has some serious playmakers yeah George is more complete Co they are more complete. top to bottom offense defense special teams George is more they complete and they, better they scored on offense they did not score on defense they scored on special teams in an odd way. Mm -hmm. uh, Woodring knocked in a field goal. I mean, like, this game was very close to getting nasty. Has he missed a kick since not, not, week it's two? A, it's been a while. Yeah. And, like, they they're know what they're shorter doing. Shorter field goals, but he's been money. But, dude, yeah. they're, they they know what they're doing. This coaching staff understands. They see it all the time. They get it. Like, it, tonight yeah. you weren't there. See, Matt misses. Matt's riding there and all this. But he says, Kirby goes, Y'all keep worrying about Carson. I'm not worried about Carson at all. Yeah. This group, no, I'm not worried, worried about, about Carson. Carson. I'm worried about Carson at all myself, but that's me. We've been trying to tell everyone how good Carson is and how good he could be. But he's very good. Uh, final like statement win. This is what you expect out of a team that's number one in the country, playing their biggest rival, who isn't great. Uh, they they throttled him. Um, really this good. was this was a blowout. And uh, at, if you're a Georgia fan, this has to be extremely satisfying. Uh, another big, big win over the Gators. Yeah, I thought they looked dominant and aggressive, especially on offense. I thought they were aggressive. Statement win. Statement win. Yeah, they served notice to everybody that the, the discussion of Georgia's downfall is perhaps premature. But we'll just see how it goes. they got to follow it up. They've got a really tough road here. Even, you know... These last four games and then Alabama or LSU, nobody else is facing these games. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on our newsletter.